now. No reason, just felt like it. I've been told the machine I'm hooked up to is doing some pretty great stuff. It's efficient, it's useful, it's made by mad cats. I should probably start proofreading my will. Did you know hands can hold garbage and f***ing garbage? Game controllers are fairly understated in the grand scheme of things. I mean, as long as you can reach all the buttons at once, that shouldn't be an issue, oh right? God, they are ridiculously controller. important to the gaming experience, but that importance comes at a price. As the years have gone on, official game controllers have risen in cost significantly. We go from the GameCube controller retailing for $19.99 to my scheduled laugh at the Switch Pro controller's price point. Ha! The prices of game controllers can be absolutely ridiculous, sometimes Freaking costing nine. nearly as much as a new game, sometimes 50. costing as much as a new game, more than a new game. $70, man, I found a mattress for that much. I will admit, stuff like the Nintendo Switch Pro yeah, Controller and DualShock 4 have a lot of random junk thrown into them, and at least kind of explains why the prices are so much higher than controllers in the past. But then the Xbox One controller is pretty much identical to the Xbox 360 controller in terms of features, and it's $65. Did all the money go into giving the thumbsticks tire tracks? Controllers yeah, can be expensive, non... sure. You can probably make it buy with just the one that came bundled with your console, but what if you want to play a local multiplayer game, or what if your controller breaks for some reason? You're gonna need an extra controller, and the official ones, those can be pricey. But you always have other options. Give these away with car stereos. Third-party controllers. Controllers not made by the company who makes the console. You never know what you're gonna get with these things. What? Since they're made by a company that had nothing to do with the actual console, they don't have to abide by any rules, designs, or legal restrictions, nothing. Now, why would you get a third-party controller instead of a first-party one? Well, I can think of a few reasons, but most of the time, it's all about the price point. These bad boys would sometimes retail for considerably less than official controllers. You can use that money for new games and your mortgage. However, let's not throw all third-party controllers under the bus here because I consider them to fall under two types, big deals or big gimmicks. Either the controller is cheaper and that's why you'd want it, or it features something the official what controllers don't. Like controller? the QuickShot controller for the NES. This isn't supposed to be a replacement controller, it's supposed to be an alternative. If you want to use a joystick with your games, whip out the coffee table, jam the stick with the suction cups, this thing ain't going anywhere. This works well for arcade style games, or stuff like Top Gun if you're one of those people. But in terms of a controller with no real advantages compared to the official controllers outside of price point, the Hanyu Explorer 1 for the NES, literally just another company's version version of the NES Advantage. There isn't much reason for you to pick this up other than the fact that it's cheaper than the official Advantage controller. However, this thing has some interesting features. These top two buttons do absolutely nothing, and there's a useless battery compartment. I really have to start using this term better. In the grand scheme of third-party controllers, these ain't too bad. Third-party controllers were more so gimmicky back in the NES days, mainly because you needed like two standard NES controllers at the very most, so for people to want other controllers, they needed to stand out. They needed to have features the regular controllers didn't have. That called for pretty much any unofficial controller to have turbo buttons, like the Turbo Touch 360 for the Sega Genesis. This gives me chills. We have switches to give any of the buttons turbo fire, but the star of the show here is the lack of a D-pad. I'm sure tons of people who saw this in the store went, Yes! You ever just use the Genesis controller and... Ah, there's too much D-pad here. Now this, I mean, no D-pad is exactly what I wanted out of a Sega Genesis controller. This is a touchpad, and it senses where your thumb is where your thumb is. Yeah, this doesn't work very well. You don't get the precision of an actual D-pad at all. I don't know if this is whacking out because of old age, but I couldn't imagine this ever working that well when it was new. But hey, if you want a more standard experience, here's the Sega Genesis Owl Pad. I'm sure somebody stood by this controller like you're waiting in the living room for your date to come downstairs and you're talking and to her dad course, about how much you like the Sega button. Genesis controller. We're an Owlpad family. What is up with the C button? I don't know how easy it is to see, but it is significantly stiffer than all the other buttons. The back is a soap dish. Now, if you're looking to buy retro gaming garb these days, you're likely to come across these off-brand controllers. They look pretty similar to the originals, but with a few things altered so Nintendo doesn't have a f***ing aneurysm. If there's just a blank space where the Nintendo logo should be, f***ing run. These things prey on people looking to buy old systems who need an extra controller. They're usually for sale at retro game shops and look almost identical to the original controllers, but are almost always inferior in every way. Like, come on, $15? That's around the same price for an official N64 controller, but people keep buying these because they look so similar and they're brand new. At least back in the day, third-party companies respected the consumer. To differentiate themselves from the first-party companies, they made sure to add their own stupid f***ing twist to their product. Introducing the Boomerang 64. 
The analog stick fell off of mine, and all that's left is a stick, so I had to improvise. Now, this isn't nearly as bad as it may seem. It is a chunk fest in my hands, but it gives you an N64 controller with a slightly more conventional layout. It has built-in rumble if you slide some AAAs in, and there are two whole Z buttons for maximum... But the D-pad is stiff, the L and R buttons are in totally out there locations, and overall, it's just an awkward controller. Also, the name is a lie. The SuperPad 64, now this screams, Oh f oh f I need a Nintendo 64 controller and only have $10. I'm gonna be saying that on my wedding night. It's a substitute, but that's all it really is. It doesn't excel at anything in comparison it's, to the original. I mean, yeah, this isn't great, but I'm used to how not great it is. The SuperPad 64 just feels weird without those grips on the sides. It feels incomplete. Z feels like a gas station fuel button. The controller works? But that's all it really does. It's totally just for people who needed that one extra controller for multiplayer. The SuperPad 64 is the type of thing I think of first when I hear the term third-party controller. Cheaper in every sense of the word. But this was made by Performance. The company I immediately think of when I hear the term third-party controller is Mad Cats. If you walk into a building constructed by Mad Cats, get the f*** out of there. Get all the kids out of the room. Three, two... One Jesus Christ, censor that. The only Mad Cats product I own legitimately without thinking twice about it being made by Mad Cats was my GameCube memory card, and I'm still happy to have it on me. Look at all these memories, an entire page of Nickelodeon game save files. I love gaming, but look at this, 16X, whatever the hell that Battle means, keep it coming. I had so much storage space on this card. Mad Cats was never the worst supplier of controllers, but they were definitely known for their mediocrity. But I mean, come on, has a company who made a Dallas Cowboys PS2 controller ever steer you wrong? A lot of their controllers aren't terrible, but they're on their way up there. The Mad Cat's GameCube controller, talk about undercompensation. You take a regular GameCube controller and then just warp every element of the controller until it's a shrunken, grotesque GameCube pad. Oh, and bold up the fonts on the buttons. Just by looking at this Ew. thing, there is something undeniably cheap about it. It's like many of these controllers, bulky. it works, but so does filing for bankruptcy, so whatever. Different people like different things. Well, what about the Mad Cat's arcade stick for the Xbox 360? With all the arcade the titles Xbox available on the 360, 360, you needed a good arcade stick to play them with. You could use I still need a good arcade stick to play them with. This controller is all show, no yeah. go. You look at it and go, wow, this is everything a regular Xbox 360 controller Imagine is, but with controllers Call tailored for arcade games. A joystick with a fire button on top, a spinner for games like Arkanoid, this is gonna end in heartbreak. This is just a regular thumbstick on stilts. It has such a wide range it of is. movement. Look at Most it. arcade joysticks are locked in a set number of directions. Here you have full 360 degree movement, which let me tell you now, this does not work well for Ms. Pac-Man. The entire controller <laughs> itself is too tiny like you want to be able to slam an arcade controller on a coffee table and not have to worry about it moving all over the place no this one's too small and light to set down and play with but it's too big and cumbersome to hold in your hands this has a lot of the same problems as the atari 2600 joystick in terms of size i can't say mad cats didn't try with this controller but they didn't but want to know who did try with their controller nickelodeon put spongebob in your hands SpongeBob controllers for the PlayStation 2 and GameCube. I remember advertisements for these, and yep, it is SpongeBob in your hands. It's a good Wednesday night controller. I'm not gonna use it all the time, but one day a week I'm good with. You get a lot of these novelty yeah, controllers made by third that. parties, like a Dallas Cowboys controller, damn it. Now, you can't go talking novelty controllers without bringing up Afterglow. Yeah, I was 16 at some point. This interests me. An Afterglow Wii remote, transparent in all the right ways. Lock some batteries in, sync it up, and that is fairly disappointing. They move some button placements around, like, the one and two buttons are at an angle, that's sort of annoying. That's Plus and minus yeah. are right next to the A button, honestly, a pretty okay change. But then the home button was moved all the way to the top, and you need a damn toothpick to hit it. Well, why sit here and whine when we can whine with even more style? A rock candy nunchuck. Finally oh. a controller that answers my lucid dreams. The nunchuck finally has a it's transparent plastic as well, but because of that, we get to see some of the iffy looking wire in here. That doesn't look too good. If this doesn't scream playing Goosebumps Horrorland, I don't know what does. Now, what if you're playing Xbox 360 and your hands start to bleed? Well, damn, you don't want to stop playing to dry the blood off, so introducing Airflow, the controller with a fan. You hit this button and the fan turns on. Well, that checks out. This is a very standard wired Xbox 360 controller, but with LEDs and a fan with two different speeds. Honestly, it's good at what it does. If you're really hankering for a controller with a fan, you can do a whole lot worse than airflow. Speaking of good third-party controllers, the Logitech Wireless PS2 controller. Oh my god, this thing is really comfortable. Dare I say, more comfortable and sturdier than the official controller. The traditional PlayStation 1, 2, and 3 controllers just aren't really my thing, but this pucks it up a bit and just melts in my hands. Also, I like the blue underneath the analog sticks. Those are fun. Here we have a few controllers for the Nintendo Switch. First up is the 8-Bit Do SN30 Pro. I've always heard a lot about 8-Bit Do, Do, damn, whatever. They specialize in retro-esque Bluetooth controllers. This one obviously takes 
taking heavy inspiration from the SNES. And yeah, it's pretty good at what it sets out to do. I don't see this as a full-on Switch Pro controller replacement, but as a supplemental controller for 2D platformers or retro stuff, then oh yeah, it's good. It also works on PC, Android, and irrelevant, so there are a ton of uses for this thing. But what about a controller made specifically for the Nintendo Switch? Well, just your luck, here's the Power A wireless controller. Themed after The Legend of Zelda, specifically with some I Twilight have. Princess art, it's okay, I mean, it's perfectly fine. It has motion controls, you also get these buttons on the back you can map any of the other buttons to. There's However, you don't get HD middle. Rumble or NFC here. For that, you need to chalk up an extra 20 bucks for the official Pro Controller, that's not worth it. The extra money may not be worth what the Pro Controller adds in terms of features, but I will say the extra 20 bucks is worth the more premium feeling of the Pro Controller. This is perfectly fine, it does the job, but at 50 bucks for a third-party controller, I'd just bring for a Pro Controller at that point. Here I have a bunch of PS3 controllers. <laughs> all right, first up, this is the GameStop branded one. That feels all right, let me test out the trigger. Oh my God. The tier one wired PS3 controller, pretty much just like an Xbox One controller. The X got rubbed off here. <laughs> that means somebody must have used this thing. Rock Candy strikes again, this time with this tiny PS3 controller. This feels like something I get out of a capsule machine. Let me rewind a bit to the PS2, the TTX Tech Wireless Controller. I see they had to make sure the button symbols were different enough to avoid copyright problems with Sony. What are you talking about? That's not a PlayStation X, that's a Norse symbol. It's feeling like one of those B-Bond cool kind of days, you know? Here's the B-Bond cool for the Nintendo Switch. This hurts. Everything just doesn't feel right. These triggers, the sticks, the D-pad. No. Okay, I've never bought into third-party controllers before because you are almost never going to get the same experience or quality than from the first-party offerings. Sure, some stand out, but 90% of the time, you're asking for trouble buying these things. Oh, wow, a Nyko controller. Might as well be saying, oh, wow, I can't just buy a pre-owned first-party controller or save up just a little more for the official one. Sure, some of them have their place in the market, but time and time again, I just ask myself, why do most of these exist? And on top of that, Mad Cat's pulled a fast one on me. This isn't a life support machine. This was just a bread box.